Welcome back to this heated show. So, of course, it's time for us to get all up in Leon's personal business. But before we, we do that, so far. <laughs> as Catalina said earlier, I have a confession. I'm hands down one of your biggest fans. Thank Been you, love. following you for years through your career. And I'm excited that you're actually sitting right next to me. Thank you, love. Um, so, jumping in, you started this thing when you were 15, 16. You, you picked it. up the guitar when you was a little bit older. Yeah. Do you think that you started your career a little later than what you would have wanted to? No, no. I, I, because I was a poet first, um, and so oh, I was I'm able, so was I was poet, able yes. to understand um, the 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 language and understand what I wanted to say. I was that. But chubby. you started at 15. No, 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 no. Prior to singing, I I didn't start at 15. I started trying at 15. Okay, but so that's I like early. I like prayed. I like prayed and said, Lord, I need to sound like Luther and Marvin yeah. Gaye and Marvin Ooh. Winans. Big shoes. It was a yeah. yeah He's God. So Amen. and so I did that. And so I didn't start singing professionally until my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And so still super late. I came out of church. So you got kids that were singing in their teens and their early, mm -hmm. you know, Sunshine Band. Oh, I was in so the sunshine all of that. Band. So it was it was pretty late in terms of. Um, you know, well, the then industry. God's timing is perfect. Amen. Right. Okay. Right. So you, as you just mentioned, you were a preacher's kid. Yes. So PK, as they call you Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is it true what they say? But anyway. It is. Oh, hey, hey, hey. It is. He did so, just so post that account. Account. I think it's true. So, <laughs> <laughs> that was off camera, Catalina. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So what kind of music were you able to listen to under your father's roof? Oh, only, only gospel for the most part. But I understood what that meant and the heart behind that. So when I started to listen to things like James Taylor and Bill Withers oh, wow. and wow. the Carpenters, and when I started to listen, I started to understand. That's why I picked up the guitar. There wasn't many playing it when I was um, wanting to pick it up, mm -hmm. but I, I just felt like that was my expression. Wow. Was that something that, because it sounds like you have a very eclectic taste yeah. for music. Does that <laughs> constantly influence you? Or are you pulling from genres other than yours on a regular basis? I think you have to. As a creator, you have to uh, really understand, respect, and honor the past. But you always have to keep your ear to the ground because uh, creativity spawns from any moment, anywhere. And you got to respect that. Mm -hmm. you got to be ready for that. So what is... Uh what does your family think that now you're doing music and this type of music? Are they are they okay with this? Absolutely, they're okay with love music. They're okay with life music, political music, because it's still an expression of my relationship with God. Number one mm. and number two, I don't think you can talk about God without talking about love. That's true. I, I think I think the ultimate sense of pure romance happens when you understand love from an unmovable perspective. Yeah. Without that, I can't I can't love you if I don't understand what unconditional is. So then you're okay with Amen. someone calling you a gospel artist? Because some like to say that, you know, I'm more than that, but you're okay with being called a gospel artist. I'm okay, I'm okay with being called a gospel artist just as much as I'm okay with saying Lil Duval um, didn't know what he was saying when he said it. I think people have a perspective. It's not my job or uh, responsibility to say you, you're saying it wrong, you're saying it wrong. It's just my responsibility to get to their hearts. So call so me anything you want to call. Because you are really, what you do kind of defies a category, correct? It does, it does. And I find my career, in my career, I'll be one place, you know, with people with candidates, and then I'll be another place <laughs> with, with people with parishioners. You know what I mean? And yes. so I find myself just having to be what I am where I am. Yeah, I understand. That's awesome. That. So, of course, um, you, you have your gospel music that you write, sure, that you sing, sure. and then of course you have your R&B. And it's good and sexy, yeah. Mm, yes, it is. Good and sexy. <laughs> yes, it is. Amen, amen. So for those people who may say, wait a minute now, mm -hmm. what is it going to be? Either you're singing for Jesus mm -hmm. or you're singing for the Bound Chicka Wow Wow. Well, uh, Thomas Dorsey, the creator of Bound Chicka Wow Wow, <laughs> Thomas Dorsey, who created gospel music in the 1920s, uh, came from a jazz background. My question to them is, how did we sing gospel music before gospel music was gospel music? Mm, That's number one. Number two is, if anybody wants to define my music, it's somewhere between the Proverbs, the Psalms, and the Song of Solomon. I think that expression is all scriptural, and I have uh, the ability to articulate it in our time. It's awesome. I okay. love that. Mm -hmm. So you're from Jacksonville, obviously. Mm -hmm. yep, so Google. how often do you get to come home? Uh, I, I only get to come home maybe twice or three times a year. Really? Yeah, not as much as I, not nearly as much as I want. So to. where do you call home? Where do I call home? Where do you lay your head at night, bro? Oh, where's your mail sent? She needs it's an address. Atlanta. Where's your mail? <laughs> so, so this is this is in your business. Atlanta, Atlanta is yes, home. Yes, yes, okay. very nice. Absolutely. So coming back to Jacksonville, what was the first thing you would eat? 
Uh, oh my God, Jenkins. Really? Jenkins, Jenkins and Jerome Browns. Really? Yeah, so you a yeah. barbecue man. No, no, I, I'm a Duval man. It's just, that's the first thing we're, that I remember coming oh, that's back home. home. Yeah. That's yes. home for me. Rebought Reigns Jenkins. Yeah, oh, why? Rebought Reigns, you know, that's serious. So, yeah. That's, yeah. That's now tell me, serious. I want to know about uh, your nonprofit, Unify. Yes, Unify is a nonprofit that we organized, and what we do, we go in cities where there's amazing um, nonprofit activity, right? And so, for instance, in Memphis, we got um, a nonprofit that did expungements, and so we uh, used them as one of our targets and we got the creatives around that area the artists that are well known and we brought in some national artists and we did a concert and exposed the fan base of the creatives to the nonprofit so they gave money they gave time and then they were exposed to volunteerism and, and, and all of that it's space awesome. so unify is more of a bridge and we get to do it in different cities across the US that's huge when you can so, connect artists to other people I mean that's that's yeah, massive, it takes yeah. their fan cause. base that's great yeah. to something that's deeper than them mm -hmm. that's so cool so yeah. let's talk about why you're in Jacksonville other than being on the chat what else you for Henny's for? birthday <laughs> for my birthday, for Henny's here birthday. For? Um, I'm here for my I'm here for my dad I'm here for Aww, um, and, and, so and what I did and what I did was early on um, about 15 years ago, me and a group of individuals we call Firestorm had um, at midnight had a concert. It was like a prayer slash, you know, just what does amazing music sound like when you don't have to entertain people, mm, right? Wow. And yeah. so we got together and we just created music and just kind of let it go. And my sound, like freestyle, yeah. freestyle, oh, absolutely. Cool. And, and wow. so it, my my career has been defined by that moment. And so I'm I'm coming back um, to my father's church, the same place. Uh, oh, this is we your started. Church. This is my father's church, wow. and we're coming back and we're setting it up, bringing lights and all of that stuff. And so we're going to sit there. It's free to the public. And if you want a special seat, it's twenty dollars. We give you some free items or whatever. But it's all to give back to the space that defined me. And so that's what we'll be doing tomorrow night at seven. That wow. is such a sweet homecoming show. I yeah, know. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is so awesome. And then my birthday, of course. Okay. So <laughs> don't forget, people. You can see this man right here, Mr. Leon, live tomorrow night. He'll be performing at seven p.m. at five. Firestorm, the reunion. For ticket and ticket information and directions, you can visit the website leontimbolive.com. And coming up a little later, we have a surprise for you because he is performing for us. Yay! But first, we're getting to know Mrs. South Asia International 2017. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back.